Well, joining us today in the Phoenix locker room is Phoenix defenceman Dwight Parrish. Dwight, welcome to Phoenix TV. Thanks, Andy. First of all, Dwight, let's have a check up with how the family are. How's wife Nicola and young Max? Yeah, they're doing very well, thanks. Uh, Max is growing and uh, I can't believe he's going to be 16 months soon. But uh, yeah, no, they're both doing very well, thanks. And I guess uh, with what's coming up in a few weeks, a busy time preparing for Christmas and, and young Max. Oh yeah, he's uh, he's at that age where he'll understand it. I think you know maybe a bit better this year than last. So looking forward to it. But uh, I don't think he'll you know he won't fully grasp it this year. I think the, the year after will be the first big one. But uh, he'll get spoiled no doubt by the relatives. I'm sure. <laughs> exactly, the grandparents will oh, probably yeah. be doting on him big time. Yeah, you know Nicola's mom uh, is uh, with him quite a bit, and uh, he's. Uh, they get on really well, so he, he gets spoiled by, by all Nicholas family around here. <laughs> <laughs> Looking at the hockey now, Dwight, and uh, many people would have said in the summer when the Phoenix signed Dwight Parrish that they were signing the oldest man in the league, but of course you're not the oldest man in the league, so uh, not quite the veteran on this team just yet. No, uh, you know, we've got one guy that's uh, just a bit older, uh, but he can, uh, obviously he can still play. You know, he's, uh, the way he plays, you, you can never guess his age. Uh, he looks like he could play for you know another ten years. So, um, you know, I just uh, try and do my part and uh, you know try and stay young. <laughs> I guess uh, having been away in Bracknell for a couple of years and with no disrespect to Bracknell at a lower level than the Elite League, I guess there was some a fair, a little bit of shock when Tony gave you the call in the summer, as you as you previously said, but also it was uh, a, a good boost to your confidence to know that people still wanted you to play at this level. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, when you go down and you know, like you said, it's, you know, it's a lower level than this. Um, you know, you wonder, I, even when I got the call, I said, oh, I've not been there for a while. Can I still play at that level at my age? And uh, when you play at a lower level, um, you know, perhaps your game goes down a bit. But, uh, you know, Tony gave me the call and then we talked. And, um, you know, since I've been here, I think, you know, it took me a while to get used to the, to the pace and that again. But uh, I feel like, especially the last few weeks that, uh, you know, I'm you know, feeling better about my game now, so. And uh, a lot of the time you've been paired on D with uh, with young Luke Boothroyd, and is that uh, is that another compliment to you, for you to help shepherd young Luke along? Yeah, I like to look at it that way, and, uh, you know, Tony's, you know, shown the confidence to put me, like you said, back there with Luke, but, uh, you know, Luke's, uh, you know, a fine defenseman in himself. Um, he's got all the tools, I think, you, you know, just uh, the more ice time he gets, you can see him developing, and uh, he just needs that confidence, and, you know, when he plays with confidence, you can see that, you know, he knows the game. He's uh, he's a great skater. He's got all the tools. So I think, uh, you know, the more ice time he gets, he's going to be, you know, a good one here in the future. You've used the word there in that comment about uh, Luke, about confidence. And confidence is a massive part in this game, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. You know, even no matter what age you are, you know, confidence, uh, you know, is something that, you know, helps you out a great deal. When you lose your confidence, you know, your game slides and, you start second guessing yourself and, and not going with your instincts and, and that's when you're making mistakes that you normally wouldn't make. Uh, so, you know, the more ice time he gets at, at a young age, you know, um, it's just going to benefit him and benefit the team, uh, you know, because he'll be better and, and then, the, you know, the team and Tony will have confidence in him and you put him out there in any situation. Looking back over the summer and the early part of the season, as the team was assembled, obviously you, you were one of the earlier signings, so you saw the signings coming uh, right throughout the summer and into late August. Did you get an early feeling that the squad was going to be as good as it's turned out to be? Yeah, I mean, to be honest, I, you know, I didn't know too many of the guys. A lot of the guys are a lot younger than me. So, um, and they came, most, you know, came from over in North America. I've been over here for, you know, I think eight years now. So I, I don't think I've played against any of these guys. Um, but, you know, I've known, you know, Tony's history in the past as a coach. He's, uh, you know, always done well recruiting. Um, and I think, you know, it goes to show again this year and he's put a good squad together. We've had a pretty good start uh, the last few weeks. Obviously, uh, we slipped a little bit, but um, yeah, you know, that was, a, you know, another goal when, when I signed in the summer was talking to Tony is, you know, wanted to try and win something with this club. Uh, it's like, you know, my, with my wife being from here, it's second home and uh, I've always liked Manchester. So, uh, you know, for this team to win something, you know, I, th I think we have the, the potential to do it and, and it'd be great to do it in this city for this club. Exactly. Now, looking, you, you mentioned there about recruitment, and of course, for the last couple of years, you were in Bracknell as player coach yourself. So you've been involved in that recruiting process. How difficult is it, particularly as a player coach, because you've got to bring in players not only that are going to serve the club, but that you're going to be able to play with yourself. How difficult a job is that? Yeah, I think you know, 
uh, at this level, it's it's more difficult down there. Uh, you've kind of got a group of, of British guys, you know, that uh, live in the area, have been with the club for a bit. That uh, that you bring, you know, seem to come back year after year, with a few exceptions. Um, and then it's uh, you know getting a lot of guys because because they can't have a work permit down there, so you've got to make sure uh, where they're coming from and uh, you know that they've got the right credentials and everything. And on top of that, being able to play. But um, you know, at this level, you need to bring in. 10, 11 guys, and a lot of times, the guys that you know you're bringing in, you've not had the chance to be able to, to see play, or you've got to take you know other people's word for it and, and everything else. Uh, so you know it's a difficult job. Um, you know when the time change in North America and everything else works, uh, you know against you a little bit. So, but uh, it, it's also you know difficult to play. You got so much going on. You're trying to watch the other teams, see what they're doing, trying to watch you know your guys, and, and try and concentrate on your own game as well. So. You know, it uh, it has its moments of, you know, it can be pretty <laughs> difficult at times. <laughs> exactly. You mentioned it earlier that you'd been over here now for something like eight years. Obviously, you first started with Cardiff and, yeah. and then you came to Manchester. And when you first came over from, uh, from North America to join the Devils, a lot of people looked at the leagues in North America in, a, in almost a very strict ladder effect of obviously the NHL at the top, then the American League, the International, the East Coast and so on, working down. Looking at the spread of players that have come in, not only to the Phoenix, but also around the league this year, there's a lot more guys from the Central League and the United Hockey League. And it appears that the, the gap between the leagues that was perceived appears to be narrowing in North America. W would you say that's a fair reflection? Yeah, it seems to be the case. Um, you know, like you said, when I, was, when I was there, there was basically, you know, those leagues that you mentioned uh, before. Uh, and now there's, like you said, the Central and, and the United League. And... I think, you know, I don't think the Central League was even around when I was there. I think the United League might have just started up. And uh, I think they were quite a bit, you know, lower at the time. But, you know, from the, uh, seeing the guys that have come over from the, those leagues and the way that they can play, uh, they must be, you know, closing the gap. So, you know, it's good. It just shows that, you know, there's a lot, uh, a lot of talent out there and a lot, of, a lot more people, I think, playing the game. So uh, they definitely must be closing the gap on those other leagues. In the eight years that you've been in the UK, Dwight, what, what, what changes have you seen? Obviously, you've been through probably, fair to say, a couple of traumatic areas, with, with obviously in Super League and then the collapse of Super League and then the formation of the Elite League. But overall, I mean, obviously you've enjoyed it, otherwise you wouldn't, you wouldn't have hung around and you yeah. married a, a Manchester girl, which is, which is good. But overall, how have you seen the game grow or not in the UK? Um, I mean, I think when I first came over, our, um, I think it was just kind of going... At the end of its uh, of its peak, maybe that it had in the, in the late '90s there, um, and then uh, you know it went through a bit of a maybe a, a rough patch there with like you said the transformation, the the ending of the Super League, and um, and then there was the BNL, and then that ended and uh, and things like that. Uh, it's um, the play, I think uh, the games change as well. You know, as the NHL have, have not really changed the rules, but they enforce the rules now and. Uh, you know they do the same over here. So I mean, it, it, when it, when I first came over, I think it was a bit more of uh, you know grind grind it out. Uh, There's a lot of big guys over here and uh, a lot of tough guys as well. Um, but the guys that could play, and and I think the game was a lot you know grinding it out and physical hockey. And um, I think it's it's changed a lot now. Where the, you know you see there's a lot more smaller guys now, a lot of guys with a lot of skill. I think the game's probably faster now than it was back then. You know there's no holding up and, and things like that which, you know, I think it makes it tougher defensively. I know that. <laughs> um, you know, your forwards can't help you out as much. They can't slow the other guys up for you. Uh, so, I mean, you're under pressure even quicker. So uh, I think I think it's changed for the good, though. I think it's better for the fans that, you know, that pace and, um, and without all the clutching and grabbing and things like that, it lets the skill guys play. So uh, I think it's definitely been a change for the better.